The happiest holidays begin at Thomas Cook, don't they, Oliver? <laughs> don't just book it, Thomas Cook it. Hey, how comes Mum does all the ass work? Oh, because, Rodney, that is nature's way. Really? Look, Rodney, it's all to do with the biology of the thing. The female tends the nest. The male is the provider, the hunter. So you hunted down this packet of Nor special recipe quick soup, overpowering the pieces of chicken and ham and crispy croutons. They're croutons. It's French. Gloria, I've made the soup. You'll learn, Rodney. This is a man's world. New Nor special recipe quick soup with croutons. Master an art in glass. Engineer with the skill of a watchmaker. Capture the brilliance of Turner's colors and the reality of sound. Television from Hitachi, made with you in mind. Servicing on a Citroen BX is enough to last a full 12,000 miles. The Citroen BX loves driving, hates garages. Paul and Linda on dope charges again? Why? What's McCartney really like? This week in the Sun, ex Wings guitarist Denny Lane talks about life with Paul. I can tell you about their millions, about the drugs, how they get their kicks, and about the women Linda couldn't stand. Denny has the inside story. Have you heard about Paul and John's last meeting in New York? And I'm telling why he couldn't bear to go to his father's funeral. Don't miss the real McCartney only in The Sun. Plus Torval and Dean, whatever happened to the partners they left behind, The Sun tracks them down. Discover how the most beautiful body in Dallas keeps in shape and find out about the Mile High Club. Members tell how they joined in The Sun and play Britain's biggest bingo. We've paid out over five million pounds already and there's 40,000 to win every week. It's all in your Super Sun this week. I'll always be grateful for being given nine lives. You see, hmm. Not every cat gets nine lives. Shame, really. These new meat dinners are chunkier and juicier. And when it's his rabbit, you can really taste the rabbit. And the chicken. Oh, you can really taste the chicken. Yes, there are times when I really need my nine lives. Tuesdays, generally. A cat deserves new nine lives once a week. Or maybe twice. Since 1924, when we introduced them, Kellogg's cornflakes have remained the original and the best. Now, we've made them a little crisper than ever before. And to celebrate, what better than a bright new pack? Handyland, Newport and Cardiff for your tiles. Just in, 16 tons of 6-inch tiles to clear at £1.99 a square yard.
Here's some news for Teletext viewers. There's a new fast Oracle service on ITV and Channel 4. The page numbers to remember are 195 and 495. That's where you'll find full details on all the new listings by simply paging the Oracle, ITV's Teletext service. Mmm, Portugal looks marvellous. Mm, but we'll never save that much in time. It looks like Benidorm again. Sounds like you need a Midland Save and Borrow account. What's that, Griffin? Save a regular sum each month, anything over £10, mm -hmm. and you can borrow 30 times that amount immediately. A £300 loan, just like that? You don't even have to ask. You have to pay interest while you're borrowing, of course, but we pay you good interest when you're saving. Ooh, it's Portugal for us this year, Griffin. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Send us a postcard. Ah, uh, if I were 20 years younger. The Midland Save and Borrow account from the listening bank. Last week, Eric, one of BP's most reliable distributors, was enjoying his day off, practicing his hobby of escapology in shark-infested waters, when his best customer had run out of central heating oil, and he had just three and a half minutes to change and be in Nantwich, 75 miles away. BP distributors will deliver, never mind how. How often have you thought about making some improvements and then left it at that? Now you can do it easily with Show Me How, a practical weekly guide to making and caring for the things in your home. In the first issue, making curtains, with a chart showing how much material you need, whatever your heading tape, and how to remove those annoying white rings. And there are lovely ideas, like making a matching lampshade from a spare bit of wallpaper. Imagine making padded headboards, loose covers, a simple towel holder. Show me how, helping you turn your thoughts into action. Page the new fast oracle service. There's so much on it. She'll do. Burglars don't look like Bill Sykes these days. They can be very smart and very plausible. Hello, love. Just want to check your water pipes. All part of a national survey. Nothing to worry about. But anything wrong, the council will pay. We'll just start off... Don't let anyone into your home that you're not sure about. Can we a cup of tea? Come on. Who is it? Put the chain on the door before you Hold open on it. A and don't let anyone in until you're sure who they are. Where's your card? What you got in there, Doris? The crown's yours. Must be a fine thing. If in doubt, check up. In this weekend's Jimmy Young television programme, we'll be discussing law and order. My special guest is Home Secretary, the Right Honourable Leon Britton. So join us for what promises to be a lively edition of the Jimmy Young television programme. That's tonight, 11 o'clock, ITV. And before that, at 10 o'clock, we'll have tonight's play in our series, Love and Marriage. But first, time for us to join ITN in London for the news. The suffering of Uganda. End the violence now, says the Archbishop of Canterbury. 25 animal rights protesters arrested at Fox Farm. Brighton do it again. Liverpool are out of the FA Cup. And is this the way to turn up for school?
Good evening. About 30 people, including at least seven children, are now feared dead in Uganda after an armed gang ransacked a village near Kampala. Many of the victims had been hacked and slashed with knives and machetes. Full details of the attack, one of the bloodiest incidents in the country for several months, reached Kampala as the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Robert Runcie, was preaching to thousands of Christians there. He called for an end to the tide of violence and a new beginning for Uganda. Dr. Runcie has been hearing from local churchmen about conditions in the country. Today he installed a new Anglican Archbishop and urged the people to resort not to the gun but to the olive branch. On a day when the Archbishop of Canterbury began his sermon by saying, of all the nations on earth you deserve a new beginning, we came to the Mulago Hospital in Kampala. It is the very worst face of Uganda, but the fact that it exists at all in this naturally rich country is proof of how far off that new beginning is. This child is one of the latest arrivals at Ward 7 in Mulago. He and the baby next to him are suffering from the most acute malnutrition that could kill in a matter of days. Like so many others here, they're orphans and refugees. Their parents have died in a war over who should run this country. There's strong evidence, as there is with dozens of orphans here, that those parents were killed by an army still ignoring the rights of innocent civilians. From now on, they'll take their place with hundreds of others in the food line that symbolizes total dependency. Dependency on relief agencies in Britain, America, Germany and elsewhere who provide the aid that keeps them alive. Some inevitably will not make it. There is one child here who has to be fed intravenously and then with a mouth syringe. But he's too weak to accept the best technology can offer. His life can be measured in days. The world, as Dr. Runcie said in his sermon, has not been deaf to the cries of a nation which has been subjected to appalling suffering. Yet the world, as the Archbishop was quick to add, cannot even begin to appreciate the tragedy that is the life of these people and these children. Because if there is hope today in Ward 7 of the Mulago Hospital, it is for the next generation, not this one. David Smith, ITN, Kampala, Uganda. Here, 25 animal rights demonstrators have been arrested trying to break into a fox farm. Thousands of protesters had marched on the farm, which has been the scene of previous demonstrations. Around 3,000 demonstrators from all over Britain converged on Coxparrow Farm to demonstrate against the conditions of the Arctic foxes farmed there. The protesters from scores of animal welfare groups as well as anarchist organisations joined the procession. The police were taking no chances. Over 500 officers, including mounted police, surrounded the farm. 